Hello, everybody. It's Paul Neese from Mature Life Ministries. We have another great guest today who has a wonderful testimony to share. He's all the way on the other side of the world in Australia. Michael, say hello to the Mature Life audience. Yeah, good day, everyone, and greetings from uh, Perth, Western Australia. Wonderful. Thank you, Michael. Michael, uh, I want uh, you to share your testimonial of how you found a Torah life uh, with my audience. And you grew up Christian, correct? That's right. Uh, I suppose uh, born in, in Poland and uh, the first 13 years brought up uh, Catholic in Poland. Wonderful, wonderful. So you were born, your family was uh, pretty much uh, Catholic. They brought you up Catholic until you were 13 years old. Then what happened at 13? Yeah, we came out to Australia back in 1992, and uh, I suppose that's where uh, uh, we had uh, a first change in, in my life, at least. Uh, went to an evangelical church, uh, which very much taught the uh, uh, the uh, salvation through, you know, grace through faith, and, and uh, that's where I experienced the first change in my uh, journey uh, and relationship with God, accepting uh uh, the Messiah, I suppose, as my personal uh, savior back then. So, uh, going to this church, you've been pretty uh, strong in your faith all these years. And 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 what happened? Why did you look elsewhere, or were you not looking? Explain what happened. Yeah, there was always some something missing there. I suppose it was a, it was a journey uh, through hills and valleys, if you like. But uh, uh, I think it was uh, probably a year after we we had our. Uh, uh, son uh, back in 2008. So in 2009, uh, my wife and I decided to actually uh, read the scriptures together, and, and which we didn't do when we first got married. We didn't actually read the Bible from the beginning uh, to the end. So we thought we'll decide. We decided to read and not skip through the uh, the difficult uh, uh, books of the uh, so-called Old Testament and uh, in, and not stop at uh, you know Exodus uh, 20 and uh, and actually read through Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and Numbers and and as we were doing that, uh, we were quite challenged on a number of things that we uh, we used to hold on to and uh, and so that was a uh, that was the start of 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 the of, of I suppose a new uh, faith journey or so, a new stage of our journey. So you've been a Christian your whole life, and you had up to that point you'd never read the whole Bible. That's right. That's right. And we are, I suppose never really uh, looked into you know uh, uh, the Torah, the uh, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, uh, Numbers, only ex, you know Genesis, Exodus, and and that's that was the that was it from the Old Testament. Besides Psalms and and maybe selective verses and 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 some books. But uh, so we really wanted to make the effort to actually read the scriptures together as husband and wife and uh, and study the word. So so that. So that's where yeah. it started. You and your wife decided you're going to read the book from the beginning together. And when that's you started right. reading that as a Christian, uh, did you think you, 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 knew, you knew Yeshua, so you knew everything it was going to say. So tell us about the surprise or shock when there were things in there that you hadn't have known, or tell us what happened. Well, we didn't have to read too far. I mean, we were pretty. We, I think we got as far as you know the first couple of uh, chapters in Genesis when things started popping up. Uh, you know, in regards to th simple things like uh, you know the 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 animals that Noah took on the ark, and uh, that was the first surprise to us. Never, never, never saw that before that he actually took uh, the clean and unclean animals, and there was a distinction there. And and it was a time when my wife was actually looking at uh, healthy, uh, you know, healthy uh, diet. It's a biblical diet, so she was coming from that perspective, and uh, and I suppose when we got to uh, Exodus 20 and the question on the on the Sabbath uh, was raised, and uh, that's something that challenged me uh, more from that side. Um, so that, that's where it started with uh, for myself uh, the Sabbath, and uh, for my wife Evie uh, the actual. Uh, biblical uh, diet, um, and then from then I suppose it went to uh, uh, another thing that really uh, uh, screamed uh, at us from the scriptures was you know Leviticus 23. That um, we always we always had love for the Jewish people in Israel and appreciated the uh, uh, the feasts, especially you know Passover and uh, and Shavuot or Pentecost, um, uh, but really had um, no greater understanding of those and we always thought well these are 
these are Jewish feasts. Uh, but really, when we read Leviticus 23, that these are actually Yahweh's feasts, these are God's feasts, his appointed times, uh, to us, that was, that was a huge challenge. Um, and uh, what was actually uh, wonderful is that uh, in this early uh, stages of our journey uh, to, um, to, I suppose, returning to the Torah, uh, my parents were going through the same uh, same thing. So it was wonderful just to uh, just to relate to each other and just to challenge each other and uh, and um, yeah, that was that was that was the start back in uh, mid to to late two thousand and nine. Wonderful. So uh, when you started to make this change, what did your your friends and family uh, from your church say, and how were they responding to this? Yeah, that was a <laughs> quite a big challenge. Uh, we were at the time going to a uh, local Baptist uh, church, um, lots of friends, and uh, you know we, we've been there for for a few years, and and we thought this is just wonderful. We want to share this with with people, and we want to uh, um, I suppose have some feedback from them and see whether you know what what we're sharing and what we what we're looking at is is uh, it would be a, you know of challenge to them and. And uh, I suppose there was a, a bit of a wall uh, that uh, came up before us, and uh, and so what we found, uh, I suppose, most disappointing is the, is the lack of uh, interest to even discuss it. So uh, so it was simply a wall uh, between us and them that was put up, and uh, and, and if that was if that was it, then. Um, uh, that if that was the end of it, that would have been okay. But uh, there was even some animosity, I suppose, uh, that we wanted to share those things. So we we found it tough in those few months, and um, and with few things, a few other things happening at the same time, we were actually uh, looking to move home in the next few months. And uh, uh, so as we were doing that, we decided to, uh, I suppose, to to step out of the church, and uh, and at the same time. With my parents and, and a couple of other families here locally, we, we started to, to meet and, and fellowship, and and uh, that was a blessing in those uh, early days, probably uh, yeah three years ago. Sure, sure. And uh, what what message would you have for uh, people in the church uh, today, Christians that uh, are where you were? They, they they're going to church, they haven't read the whole Bible, and they think what they're doing is uh, everything that they're called to do, but obviously they're not. So what message? Would you have for them? Yeah, obviously, you know, many people have uh, have a strong desire to to have a relationship with God, and uh, I suppose where where we, you know, what we found is that uh, um, we were simply not reading the scriptures from the beginning. Uh, we we just didn't know about things. So um, so I think. And also looking at uh, some of the writings of of Paul uh, in in what's uh, referred to as the New Testament, uh, I always found those uh, things um, quite difficult. Uh, there were some seeming contradictions, which I always struggled with, simply not understanding Paul, not understanding the first century context, not understanding the Hebraic context of the scriptures, uh, purely because of some verses that... Uh, um, uh, that were, you know, seeming seemingly saying that uh, that God's instructions for us on how to live are no longer relevant. And uh, once you once you start looking at the Hebraic context and and see where Paul's coming from, things were opening up. So I think I think a message to to uh, friends, uh, people in the church is to actually uh, look at the beginning of of the scriptures and see the con the the beauty the beauty of the continuity of of God's word um, and uh, the fact that. Uh, um, the Father does not change, uh, and uh, the, the, the Messiah is the same yesterday, today, and, 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 and forever. So, so His word does not change. And I think uh, one, one of the one of the um, uh, one of the uh, the things that I suppose I would like to, to share is that, uh, um, and I've always had to uh, I've always had to uh, reiterate this when speaking to Christian friends is that. Uh, you know, they um, they say that uh, I'm relying on, on on keeping the law for my salvation, and so I just have to clarify that all the time that that uh, I have been redeemed by uh, the blood of Yeshua, and uh, that, uh, that 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 salvation is through faith 
by grace of God alone. And uh, but because of my desire to to walk according to God's instructions and, and to show my love to Him, uh, I want to actually keep His commandments. And they are instructions for you know for for us to be to be blessed. So um, so this is where I, I you know I see um, it's not one versus the other. It's one before the other, and it's a and it's a relationship that the Father seeks from us. So uh, and He's already put down uh, and given us on what he uh, what, what is best for us to to, to do so uh, yeah that's just my my brief message there now that's wonderful and I know you have a, a, a group a regular group you meet with out there and your parents are part of the group that's wonderful now uh, you're trying to get the message out all over Australia I see you're sitting there with a whole bunch of books behind you and they look like the same copies of the books uh, so what are you doing? You're distributing uh, resources by uh, people that are teaching this message uh, throughout Australia. Yeah, I suppose so. Since 2010, we've uh, uh, studying the the scriptures. We've connected with a number of ministries, um, and uh, and so with a few ministries specifically, where we, I suppose we've we've connected with uh, 119 ministries that we're doing the um, uh, the DVD resources uh, across Australia and handing them out. Uh, uh, some of the um, uh, Passion for Truth Ministries resources as well. Um, obviously, we're at the moment um, we're in the middle of um, the uh, the tour with Wild Branch Ministry uh, and uh, looking to organise a tour for uh, Wisdom in Torah Ministries as well in August. So it really started early last year. We we thought that the best way to get the word out and to challenge people on on this walk and to challenge them really in in their relationship with the Father is to is to share some. Uh, introductory resources and then uh, some uh, some more deeper study into the the Torah and, and from the scriptures. So, so we we found many ministries of of great value to to be able to 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 share or to to lend out resources to. And then I suppose uh, so that started la early last year and um, mid to end last year we we thought well this is an opportunity to start a bit of a ministry and that gave birth to what we've called Restoration Down Under Ministries. Down Under, I suppose, referring to Australia and New Zealand uh, as commonly uh, understood. So, uh, so and, and, and the fact that the Father is all about uh, restoration. So that's where the Restoration Down Under Ministries was birthed. And there's, uh, there's four of us on the, uh, I suppose, the ministries committee, if you like. And, and, um, and that, that's been a blessing. So there's a number of people that... Uh, um, that uh, come to the fellowship that we have on on Shabbat, and uh, there's also others that uh, we have since connected with other home groups here in Perth, and and then also individuals and groups across Australia, which which has been an absolute blessing to be able to do that. So uh, so our desire is really to um, to uh, to get the the truth of of God's word out across Australia and New Zealand and uh, we, we do we would love to do that through sharing resources through uh, organizing events and seminars by inviting different ministries to to tour uh, across Australia and New Zealand and then we also look for opportunities uh, in terms of discipleship uh, fellowship with other believers uh, and uh, probably the fourth aspect is to look for mission opportunities uh, across uh, Australia uh, sort of more more the remote areas in Australia and then into uh, into South Southeast Asia as well so uh, that's that's where wow. the ministry's fo ministry focus is that's great that's great now uh, you know if somebody would have told you when you were uh, going to your Christian church uh, not had read the Bible completely at that point. If somebody would have told you that you would be doing this today, number one, believing or keeping Torah, and number two, uh, had this ministry uh, helping to spread this message, what do you think you would have said back then the way, where, with where you were then to somebody that would have told you, oh, in five or ten years, this is what you're going to be doing? Well, what do you think you would have said back then if somebody approached you like that? Oh look, there's so many things that we, uh, I personally didn't didn't know, uh, didn't understand back then. So it has been a journey. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't believe that. Uh, it's it has really it's just been so um, so humbling um, and to to be able to to play a very very small role 
and just to be a uh, you know a small vessel that the father can use uh, to spread the truth uh, from his word and to challenge others and and to uh, in some small way to be a blessing uh, across you know this Southland um, in Australia. So it's yeah, it's been it's been wonderful. It's been wonderful um, and uh, very very encouraging um, just to connect with people and yeah. That's great. That's great. So how could people connect with you? Anyone in Australia that's watching right now, you definitely got to get in touch with Michael's ministry. And even if you're not from Australia, Michael has a great testimonial. So Michael, uh, give us your website or how people can get in touch with you. Sure. So the uh, the actual uh, Restoration Down Under Ministries website is simply restorationdownunder.com. Uh, all the contact details are on the website there. We've got uh, phone numbers set up uh, across the country, so you can, if you're actually in Australia, you can you can contact us through uh, you know local uh, local call. Uh, obviously, the email address there info at restorationdownunder.com, and uh, we also have a Facebook uh, page again Restoration Down Under ministries which you can find and we would love to uh, touch base with you and uh, you know every week there's uh, you know people connecting and uh, asking for contacts across the country to, to fellowship to get involved in in a, um, in scripture study groups uh, so that's that's a, that's a blessing and uh, I think that's that's the biggest encouragement for me uh, through this first undertaking of inviting a a, uh, a a ministry to tour across Australia, New Zealand, and 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 the encouragement is really the the connections that uh, Yahweh has been has been doing um, to connect His people here and to uh, to work together to um, um, yeah to bring restoration to this country. So that's um, yeah that's that's great. Hallelujah! That is just so wonderful. That is so wonderful. All you're doing, Michael. Thank you for taking time out to uh, to interview. I know you're so busy. And I want to encourage everyone to get to your website. So thank you so much, man, and uh, keep up the great work. Thank you, Paul. It's been a blessing. It's been it's been wonderful. Thank you. Great. Come out of the world, oh my people. Seek the truth, avoid the evil. Learn Yahweh's ways. Torah life ministries. Come out of the world. Oh.